Today we're going to talk about muscle. We want to look at the histologic and functional characteristics of muscle cells. So there are three different types of muscle, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle. We want to uh, understand the components, organization, and role of the sarcomere uh, in the contraction. And then we want to look at the layers of connective tissue. Layers on the outside, the inside, what their role is in organization and support of muscle cells. Muscle. Today we want to identify and functionally characterize the three different types of muscle. We want to look at organization of the sarcomere at both light and electron microscopy level. We want to identify the connective tissue layers and to relate the functions of these different types of cells to their structure. Now muscle in general, its function is to generation of a contractile force, that's what it does. Uh, and you have a high concentration of contractile proteins acting in mycin in the cells. Some are arranged diffusely like uh, smooth muscle cells and others are arranged in regular units called sarcomeres. That's the striated muscle, both cardiac and skeletal muscle has sarcomeres, organized contractile elements to generate contractile force. Now skeletal muscle is striated muscle mostly associated with the skeleton. Uh, cardiac muscle uh, is also striated muscle and it's associated with the heart. Smooth muscle, smaller cells, uh, fusiform cells like a cigar, uh, and they are associated with the respiratory system, uh, blood vessels, uterus, uh, smooth muscle contraction. Now if you identify Skeletal muscle is a, a long cell, a large cell, compared to the other types of cells. It's uh, a long cylinder, the nuclei are on the periphery located there. Non-branching cell. The cardiac muscle, in contrast, is a smaller cell. The nucleus is located in the center as opposed to the periphery. And it's branched uh, as well. Usually a single nucleus, sometimes two. Smooth muscle is a long cell like a cigar with a nucleus located in the center and it doesn't have striations since it's smooth. There is another type of cell, the myoepithelial cells, and here you can see where it has formed a net around a gland there that squeezes the gland to cause secretion to occur. So this is epithelial as opposed to the three different types of smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle. In the myoepithelium we have it in the eye. If you look in the eye, the dilator muscle of the eye, which is this little line, pink line right in through there. This is the iris, which is located right there in the eye. There's the lens, the cornea of the eye. The dilator muscle is indeed a myoepithelial cell muscle too. So here we have a little summary of the different types of muscle, skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. These two are striated. This is not uh, striated, as you see. This is a skeletal muscle volunteer. Um, however, it's involuntary for smooth muscle and cardiac, uh, cardiac muscle. There's a little summary of the different activities. If we look at skeletal muscle, in a somewhat longitudinal view, you can see the nuclei located on the periphery on the sides. Uh, you can see on the uh, connective tissue surrounding individual cells or fibers, you see individual capillaries. In cross section, here's a kind of a cross section, you see the nuclei are on the periphery again of, of these long cylindrical uh, cells. If you look at this, you can see individual muscle fibers or muscle f cells. There's one here, another one here, another one here, another one here, another one here. And you can see the nuclei on the periphery of these cells. There's also capillaries in through there. And if you have a longitudinal view like this, you can see striations. Uh, the dark band is the A band. The light band is the I band. As skeletal muscle, we can see here long cells with nuclei on the periphery. And they're composed of myofibrils. So these myofibrils, little projections inside here, which also are uh, cylindrical as well, and they make up the, the striations that you see here 
are inspiration that you see on individual cells themselves collectively arranged. There's capillaries in between adjacent cells, but you see the muscle uh, cell fibers there. Now, increase in size of muscle with exercise results from a stimulation of new myofibrils. So more of these myofibrils are produced and that enlarges the size of individual cells or muscle fibers uh, and that enlarges the size of the muscle itself. We call that hypertrophy where you increase the size as opposed to increase uh, the number of cells. There are different layers of connective tissue associated with muscle. The epimesium is a connective tissue on the outside. It's on the outside, the connective tissue around the muscle. If you come in deeper, you have a paramecium. The paramecium is a kind of coarse connective tissues that uh, go through the muscle as through there. And then there's endomesium. Endomesium is what actually is around each, the connective tissue around each a cell or fiber that we that we see there. So we see on the muscle here we got the epimesium, the perimesium, and these uh, heavy bands through here and then the endomesium is around each one of these muscle cells. So the endomesium is what touches individual cells. Epimesium on the outside, perimesium, endomesium uh, around is the white that you see around each of these cells. Perimesium are running through here, the connective tissue, uh, and here in the endomesium. Endomesium, you can actually see capillaries that are, all these are capillaries that are in uh, the endomesium of the cell. So this is a cross section, and longitudinal sections, you can see the capillaries in through here. And a longitudinal section, you can see the striations. Now, if you look at the individual muscle cells, they are connected to other ones by the endomesium. Endomesium connects the different ones. And so if you have a muscle here, <clears throat> it's a series of these cells lined up. And the muscle, one cell does not span the entire muscle. You have a series of muscles tied end to end with the connective tissue of the endomesium is what ties one of these cylindrical cells with another one. Uh, so here's a perimesium, a large connect, a large blood vessels come through the perimesium of the connective tissue. And then in the endomesium, uh, you can see where blood vessels run around individual cells, and we can see the endometrial, endomesium, uh, the capillaries therein that we see. So the skeletal muscle has striations that we see the striations, the dark and light band, the A and I band, nuclei on the periphery, pretty much the same thickness throughout. Uh, they don't taper uh, necessarily at the end. It's kind of a blunt taper at the end. Do not branch. Uh, they're specialized for rapid contraction because they're aligned, the actin and mycin are aligned uh, in a sarcomere. It's voluntary, it's muscle that you can, you can control, it's associated with a skeleton. And here we can see uh, the bands. Uh, sarcomere is uh, from the uh, center of a, of a white line to the center of another white line. This is where the Z line is found, the Z line. So the band from one eye band to another eye band um, is the sarcomere. So Z line to Z line is sarcomere. Uh, this is the eye band, the light band, uh, and the A band is the dark band. And the Z line is in the middle of the eye band. A sarcomere is all the A band and two halves uh, of the uh, of the eye band. Here we can see skeletal muscle uh, as well as cardiac muscle, both of them are striated muscle. The A band is dark, as you see there. It's so-called anisotrophic, that it does alter polarized light. It's birefringent. So A anisotrophic. In contrast, the I band is isotrophic. That's where they got the I from. It does not alter light. The A band alters polarized light. The I band does not. So anisotrophic versus isotrophic. And here we can see the skeletal muscle. This is part of a sarcomere. As you see, there's a myofibril here, myofibril there. The sarcomere runs from Z-line to Z-line, as you see. This is the A-band and the I-band going from here to here. And here you can see the filaments, uh, the myosin uh, and the actin filaments, and how they are attached. Uh, Z-disc is attached to the actin, and it moves uh, independently of the myosin. Myosin states put the actin 
is what moves. So here we see a muscle is composed of a muscle cells, which are individual cells or individual fibers, as they would call them. The nuclei on the periphery, myofibrils are inside the cell. If you take one of these myofibrils, you can see the, the different band, the A band, uh, as, which is dark, and the I band, which is light, and the Z line is in between those. From Z line to Z line is one sarcomere, uh, where you have uh, the, the myosin is in the dark land, and the actin uh, is in the I band, as you see. Now what happens in contraction is the Z lines get closer together and they move in relation to the myosin. The myosin stays put. So this is, is stretched and this is contracted as you see. So you can see there this is contracted where it hardly has an H band. Is, uh, the H band is where there is no overlap between the actin uh, components. If you have stretched muscle you have a large H band. So as the sarcomere gets wider so does the H band and it has to do with reducing the amount of overlap between the actin and myosin. Now intermediate filaments in muscle cells is what organize the myofibril. So here's one myofibril, another myofibril, another myofibril, another myofibril, and the, the intermediate filaments is what keeps these things uh, aligned. So when we look at, at a light microscopic level, this all looks the same as one dark band and one light band, even though there is a little difference in these if you look at these. So it, a cell is composed of myofibrils that we see there and this is one and another one and these myofibrils are held together by intermediate filaments. So in the contraction of a sarcomere uh, you have the thin filament which is the actin filament and then you have the, this is the actin in through here and then you have the myosin heads associated with it. You have uh, tropomycin uh, in through there, and then you have troponin. Troponin has three parts. It has a T part that's attached to the tropomycin. It has a C part, which is attached to calcium, and whenever calcium is bound to it, it causes a conformational change uh, in the tropomycin that frees up uh, the binding site. And the I part is the inhibition uh, of, so the covering up of the uh, actin to the myosin head. So whenever calcium does it, it frees up, uh, calcium binds, it moves the, uh, the myosin out of the way so the actin can bind to the myosin at that point. Now whenever you stop the neurological impulse and depletion of the free calcium, so when the free calcium is depleted, then that actin-myosin cross-link cycle of the cycle is stopped. And, that's, and that also requires ATP associated with the stopping and the recocking of the head. So uh, calcium regulation is important uh, in the sarcomere to be able to, to contract as you well in the, in the myofibrils inside the cell. In order to get the electrical impulse deep within the cell so that calcium can be released, calcium is stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum you have this infolding of the plasma membrane. This is a transverse tubule. So the plasma membrane of the cell actually transfers in through uh, the cell to give it the transverse tubule. It's what brings electrical impulse, uh, depolarization from the cell deep within the cell to cause the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release its calcium. And so that's what it does. It transmits the depolarization inside the cell and sarcoplasmic reticulum, <coughs> which is really the, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum of the cell, releases calcium and it sequesters calcium whenever uh, the contraction is over. And as a consequence of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, uh, on either side of a transverse tubule, you have what we call a triad, that is a transverse tubule and two ends of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So here we see skeletal muscle in one of our slides that we'll see, this is the A-band, the I band. This is the Z line from here to here is one sarcomere. From here to here is one sarcomere. And here we see the M band. Remember the M band changes with the uh, expansion or the closure uh, of the Z line to Z line uh, two together with the contraction. So this is the H band right in through there. So we can see the A and I band uh, in that muscle. 
If you look at a cross section of a muscle, here's the nucleus of the cell, uh, and uh, here you can see a mild fibril, and in here we can see the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this is sarcoplasmic reticulum uh, associated with release of these things. So this is the cell, this is inside the cell and through here, and here we see the, mostly we see the myosin uh, that we see inside there. If you look at a little higher mag of that, uh, you can see a transverse tubule running through here. Transverse tubule runs through at the AI junction in the skeletal muscle. And stimulation of the muscle, these are skeletal muscle fibers here. You can actually see the striation, even with a scanning electron microscopic view. This is a motor end plate, so you get nervous impulse stimulating, causing depolarization of the cell. And then from the surface of the cell, the transverse tubules would transmit it inside the cell to uh, activate the myofibrils that are inside the cell. In addition to stimulation, there's also things in muscle, like a muscle spindle. It's a receptor, uh, that receptor um, of the stretch. And we can see inside there, you even have muscle fibers inside uh, the capsule of the, so muscle spindle is basically a connective tissue capsule around nervous receptors that are in there and you can actually see some of the fibers themselves. Some of the muscle fibers, you can see the striation of the fibers inside the capsule of the muscle spindle, which is a detector of, of muscle stretch. Uh, another type of muscle is smooth muscle. They're kind of cigar shaped. They're really tapered uh, on the end. The nucleus is in the center. And the uh, basement membrane is PAS staining, PS positive staining uh, basement membrane of smooth muscle. We find smooth muscle in the urinary bladder. We can see profiles of smooth muscle at higher magnification. You can see individual cells of smooth muscle with the nucleus in the center of the cell. Now smooth muscle are, uh, cells are a fusiform, that is cigar shaped, tapered at the end, a uh, single uh, central nu nucleus, a single nucleus in the center, and no striations. It's involuntary. We don't control it. It's found in sphincters, uh, sheets of internal visceral organs. Uh, it causes paracelsus in the, in the GI tract. And here we can see in the GI tract, this is an appendix. So this is smooth muscle uh, right in through there. We can see the smooth muscle. There's three different layers, one, two, three layers. This is an intercircular, outer longitudinal uh, muscle that we can see there. Now, the layering of these, name it that, uh, uh, circular uh, as well as uh, longitudinal muscle facilitates uh, paracelsus to occur. It squeezes down and moves food down from one side to the other side. So it's the organization of the smooth muscle around there that facilitates uh, the mixing and the movement of the luminal contents forward. Now here we can see a smooth muscle cell electron microscopic view, a nucleus in the center, uh, and we see little lines in there which are the actin and myosin components. We can see them over here. This is the myosin and this is the actin. So you do have actin and myosin, of course. It's just not organized in a sarcomere. Also, you see these densities. There's a density right here, uh, as we see right there, there, and there, uh, inside there. And we can see of what these densities are. Here's smooth muscle cell. This is one that's not contracted. There's another one that is contracted. These are images uh, illustrating a smooth muscle cell. There's a nucleus in the center. Uh, and you see there are different filaments. We have intermediate filaments and also we have mycin uh, filaments uh, and actin filaments in through there. And a note that whenever the muscle contracts, it uh, pulls on the surface of the cell at these fusiform densities, these different densities, and we can see those here. These are different densities that we see in the cell. There's some here, here, and here, and here, and some of them are on the plasma membrane. So you can see that some of them are within, and these are where the different uh, filament components uh, join each other. But note that the intermediate filaments do not change uh, in their length with the contraction. It's the actin and myosin that changes. Uh, also, smooth muscle. Here we can see smooth muscle. We can see these densities that we just talked about. See a host of filaments, as well as some organelles. You see mitochondria there. But here's a nervous uh, impulse that's coming through these nerves that stimulates a smooth muscle contraction. So if we look at skeletal muscle in cross-section, you can see 
the myosin and a nicely arrangement of the actin. Uh, in contrast, moon muscle, you can see the myosin uh, and the actin filaments are, even though they're there and they're lined up right, they're not organized uh, in a specific sarcomere as you see um, in skeletal muscle. The other type of muscle is a cardiac muscle. Uh, cardiac muscle is also striated and it has individual cells that join each other. So you can see their branch cells and they're joined at the intercalated disc. Intercalated disc uh, has connections of intermediate filament uh, uh, associated with uh, junctional complexes and right in through here on the uh, lateral side uh, you will actually have gap junctions to facilitate things going through. So here you see the intercalated disc fascia adherence, they would say also desmosome on adherence and desmosomes are associated with intermediate filaments and here we can see those. So you see heavy lines in addition to the striations of the striated muscle that we see. So intercalated disc enables coordination of function of the via the gap junctions. Energy transfer, calcium, different uh, things are transferred from one cell to another cell via the gap junctions. And uh, here we see a pulmonary artery in the lungs of a rat. Uh, and here we see intercalated uh, disc associated with the cardiac muscle. So the cardiac muscle extends from the heart down into the lungs in some uh, of the arteries. Uh, here's the nucleus. Uh, here we can see again, this is intercalated disc. This is the nucleus of the cell. And then these are mitochondria, big whopping mitochondria that we see in cardiac muscle. And here we can see the A-band and the I-band. You can see the Z-line in the I-band. And if you look real good, you can see a lighter H-band, the H-band uh, within the A-band itself. So, so uh, slide 14, we see cardiac muscle. We see the intercalated disc in through there in addition to striations, the macular adherence, the gap junctions that we see on the side where you get transmission from one cell to another, and the fascia adherence, which holds one cell to another cell. Remember, the cardiac cells are small, and so you need a lot of cardiac cells uh, in, the, in, the, in the heart. Now, uh, here we see the transverse tubule of a cardiac cell, and instead of it being uh, at the AI junction, it, it is actually uh, on the Z-line. Transverse tubule infagination of the plasma membrane, taking the depolarization deep within the cell and causing a sarcoplasmic particulum. Uh, to release this calcium, just like we talked about before. However, here we have a dyad for cardiac muscle because the sarcoplasmic reticulum doesn't lay beside it all along the length of a transverse tubule as it does uh, in skeletal muscle. So you just have intermittent section. Here we see two, here we see two, you would see three uh, if that would be a skeletal muscle. So in terms of regeneration uh, of muscles, a smooth muscle, lots of regeneration to grow blood vessels, uh, to uh, replace uh, smooth muscle, replace hair follicles, whatever you need, a lot of smooth muscle mitotic activity. Skeletal muscle, some, hard to illustrate, not that much. Uh, cardiac muscle, none. Uh, so an ischemic uh, heart condition is one that's most serious heart problem in the U.S., coronary artery thrombosis usually precedes participation of cardiac infarction and what happens there it kills the myocytes they can't replace and they're replaced by a connective tissue and becomes a connective tissue scar there so lacking muscle mesenchymal satellite cells you're lacking the the myocytes that are capable of division adult cardiac had little potential to regenerate after the damage is replaced by proliferating fibroblasts and connective tissue. Uh, and so you have a myocardial, a myocardial scars associated with that. So in summary, there are different shapes of muscle. Uh, you have skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, which is branched, uh, and smooth muscle. Uh, and uh, excitation occurs. You have uh, sarcomeres that contract here uh, or you have the different filaments that pull on the intermediate filaments that change the shape of this move muscle cells.